Hello guys, today I am going to explain about the Apache Hadoop ecosystem. See, what is this Apache Hadoop ecosystem? What are the components that were there inside the Apache Hadoop ecosystem? We will see today. See, if you see, this is the entire uh, Hadoop ecosystem things. Uh, uh, where uh, uh, if you see from the bottom line of the Hadoop, we are having the basic things uh, and the basic Im and uh, important components are uh, we are having HDFS and HPC. See, four things are there uh, that is uh, data storage, data processing, data access, and data management. So, if you see the HDFS, we know that uh, the HDFS is basically responsible for the storage and as well as for the accessing purpose. And next, uh, HBase is there, whereas uh, HBase is basically for the storage purpose. And uh, MapReduce is there. Uh, MapReduce is one more component. And Yarn is basically responsible for the resource uh, management. And apart from that, again, we are having the Apache Hive is there, where uh, it is completely responsible for storing all the relational data in the form of rows and columns. And if you want to, we are having one more application like Apache Pig and the next Mahout completely based upon the machine learning and Apache Abro is there and Apache Scoop and uh, Apache Woozy and uh, Woozy is one more component we are having and Apache Chukwa and Apache Flume and Apache Zookeeper. All these are the different components of the Hadoop but all these components are completely built on the top of the Hadoop world. So let's see about the one by one in detail. So first one is the HDFS. So what is meant by HDFS? We know that HDFS is the basic and the important component in the Hadoop ecosystem. So where we are going to use it to store the large amount of data sets and the very huge amount of data sets. It's not only the structured format data, it can be the unstructured format data also. So, it consists of basically two components. One is the name node and one is the data node. So, this uh, name node we know that we are going to store only the metadata information here about the data completely. So, only few resources are there uh, for the data nodes which will store the actual data. And these data nodes are uh, commodity hardwares in the distributed environment. And uh, undoubtedly, this uh, Hadoop will be the cost effective one. So, HDFS maintains, uh, it will maintain all the coordination between the clusters and the hardware uh, where it is completely, we can say it like uh, for the Hadoop, it is like a heart of the system. Next one is the Apache HBase. What is meant by Apache HBase? So, HBase is a column oriented non-relational database management system which will run on the top of the HDFS. So, HBase is a fault tolerant way of storing the sparse data sets which are common in many big data use cases. So, we can say it like uh, um, HBase, uh, it's not like normal relational databases. We are going to store our uh, data in the form of not rows and columns but in the form of column families. But in the form of column families. And uh, uh, see here, all the data I am going to store in the form of column families only. So, it is completely different from the SQL. And uh, it is well suited for the real-time data processing where I can perform the read-write operations. I can read, I can write into the large volumes of the data. And unlike the relational database systems, the HBase doesn't support a structured query language. So, it will not support any SQL languages at all. And HBase is not a relational data store also. Right. And HBase applications, these are completely written in Java rather than in the other languages so, and uh, for the MapReduce applications and HBase doesn't support the applications like Apache, Avro, REST, uh, REST and as well as the Thrift applications. So that is about the Apache HBase and uh, MapReduce. Uh, what about this MapReduce means? So we know that MapReduce means completely it is going to perform the parallel processing. So, MapReduce has basically two functions are there. One is map function and one is the reduce function. So, this map function, what it will do? It will perform some sorting and filtering of the data and thereby organizing in the form of some group. So, map generates a key value pair based result which is later on processed by the map generates a key value pair based result which is later on processed by the reduce method. And the reduce as the name suggests that the summarization by aggregating the map data. In the simple, uh, reduce uh, uh, takes the output generated by the map as input and combines those tuples into the smaller set of tuples. 
These are the two basic functions in the map reduce and then followed by the yarn. So what is the full form of yarn means at another resource negotiate. So what is the role of this at another resource negotiator means it works just like an operating system. So how the operating system will perform usually? So it will perform like uh, how to schedule the jobs, how to identify the resources, uh, to which job we have to assign that uh, resources, how many jobs are in the running state, how many are in the ready state, how many are in the uh, this state, uh, all these things has will be monitored by the YAN. So it will consist of three major components that is the resource manager, node manager and the application manager. So what is the role of the resource manager? It is having the privilege of allocating all the resources for all the applications. So for all the applications, resource manager is responsible for allocating the resources. Whereas the node manager, it will work on the allocation of the resources such as CPU, memory, bandwidth permission and later on acknowledges the resource manager. And application manager works as an interface between the resource manager and the node manager and performs negotiations as per the requirement of the team. So application manager also, it will work like an interface between these two, that is the node manager and the resource manager. So YARN is very, very important in allocating all the resources, checking the memory, checking the bandwidth and all. All these things will be managed by completely by the YARN. Next one is Apache Hive. What is this Apache Hive means? Uh, with the help of the SQL things and interfaces, uh, Hive is basically responsible for uh, reading and writing of the large data sets. So, however, uh, it will work just like a query language. It will work just like a query language called as a HQL. That is called as a Hive query language. That is called as Hive query language. So, it is a highly scalable uh, It is highly scalable and it will do the real-time processing and the batch processing work. So also all the SQL data types are supported by the Hive, thus uh, making the query processing faster. Thus making the query processing faster here. And uh, similar to the query processing frameworks, uh, Hive 2 comes with the two components that is the JDBC drivers and the uh, Hive command line. Similar to the query processing frameworks, uh, Hive also it is having the two basic uh, uh, com components are there that is the JDBC drivers and the Hive command lines are there. So JDBC along with the ODBC drivers it will help in the data storage, uh, permissions and connections whereas the Hive command line uh, helps in the processing of the queries. That is about the Apache Hive and uh, it is completely, it will completely works upon the uh, that is uh, in the ETL, it will works like a ETL tool where we can use it for uh, data warehousing and for the storage purpose also we can use it and uh, we can store it and we can retrieve the data using the JDBC drivers. Next one is the Apache Pig. What about this Apache Pig means? Uh, Apache Pig was basically developed by the Yahoo where it will works on the Pig Latin language. So Pig is very very important. Actually Pig was developed by the uh, these people, uh, um, PIG was developed uh, by the Yahoo developers uh, where it is completely a query based language similar to the SQL and it is a platform for structuring the data flow. See, at that time what happened means uh, there is a small story for the PIG here. So, usually if you want to have the lot of, uh, if you want to develop all the applications in the Java, we need the lot many resources and professionals, skilled professionals we need. So Java means we will write a lot many number of lines of code. So how many number of lines of code if you want to write for a small program means you have to write many lines of code. And at that point of time in 2000s or in 90s we don't have that many skilled professionals. So they want to develop one easiest language and so that it is very easy to run and read for analyzing the huge data sets. So what these people they did means they developed one more language like Apache Pig where we can run a very small scripts. So if you are going to write a word count program in 100 lines of code means the same program we can write within 3 or 4 lines of code using the Apache Pig. So that is the difference of the Apache Pig and the normal Java programming languages. So for but the thing is if you want to develop and if you want to run all these scripts means this is also one type of programming language. We can call it like a Pig Latin language where we need the pig runtime engine also. We need the pig runtime engine also where we can compile all the scripts and we can run in the background. And the pig does the work of executing the commands in the background and it will perform all the activities of MapReduce 
and after processing pig stores the result in the pig stores the result in the hdfs so pig latin language is specially designed for this framework which runs on the pig run time uh, just the way java runs on the jvm just the way java runs on the jvm so how the java uses the jvm for running or for compiling all the scripts huh? so in the same way pig latin or the apache pig it is going to use the pig runtime engine here and it will helps that means uh, it is very easy to write the code you we can retrieve the uh, data which is already stored in the hdfs or hive or the hbs also we can retrieve it and uh, we can run and we can compile the very short scripts so that is the use of the apache pig next one is the apache method what is this apache method means a method allows the machine learnability to a system or applications a method is completely responsible to develop itself based upon the some patterns and user environmental interactions or on the basis of the algorithms so it provides the various libraries or functionalities such as the collaborative filtering clustering and classification which are nothing but the concepts of the machine learning which are nothing but the concepts of the machine learning so it allows invoking the algorithms as per our need uh, with the help of its own libraries with the help of its own libraries we need the machine learning libraries we have we can do it clustering we can go for the classification and do lot many functionalities we can do with the help of this uh, apache method next one is the apache avro avro plays a very important role in the data serialization process why right? because we can do lot of exchanging of the services and all using the apache avro where uh, apache avro what it will do means basically we are going to write the programs uh, in uh, multiple languages but all these multiple languages is having their own syntaxes and their own things are there so what we will do we will do the serialization we will make it into uh, one common and single format where it can be read by all the people in such a way all these conversions can be done by the apache avro here and the storage is very compact and efficient and the avro stores both the data definition and the data together in one message or the file so this uh, apache avro it will perform the lot of data serialization and uh, uh, exchanging the services for the apache hub and apache scoop what is that apache scoop uh, scoop is a part of the hadoop ecosystem uh, scoop is a apache scoop is a part of the apache ecosystem since a lot of data had to be transferred from the relational database systems to onto the hadoop there was a need for the dedicated tool to do this task fast so we need the apache scoop uh, apache scoop we need uh, for the uh, hadoop ecosystem why because uh, scoop is completely responsible uh, for transferring the data from the rdbms files so this is completely responsible that means we can uh, retrieve only the relational database files into the hadoop ecosystem so when it comes to transferring the data we need few requirements for transferring the data here we should see the consistency also and we should see whether the data is in the downstream pipeline or not and the users should ensure the consumption of productivity resources among the other things and the map reduce application is not able to directly access the data that is residing in the external relational databases so this method can expose the system of the risk of too much load generation from the cluster nodes so this apache scoop in one line if you want to say means in this apache hadoop ecosystem this is responsible basically for retrieving all the rdbms files into the hadoop ecosystem next one is the apache uzi uh, what is this uzi means uzi in one line i will say so this is basically responsible for the coordination here so uzi it is completely dependent on the workflow and the coordination between the different modules here so it is also a nosql database where it will supports all kinds of data here and it will provides a google big table that is able to work on the big data sets uh, in an uh, effective manner here so and uh, we need to search or retrieve the occurrences of something small in a huge database the request must be processed within a short span of time and at times hbs comes handy as it uh, gives the tolerant way of storing the limited data so apache uzi is a scheduler system to run and manage the hadoop jobs in a distributed environment it allows to combine the multiple complex jobs to be run in a sequential order to achieve the bigger task to achieve the bigger task so within a sequence of the task two or more jobs can also be programmed to run parallel to each other here so it will works just like a scheduler system here 
and uh, uh, Uzi is responsible for uh, triggering the workflow actions and as well as uh, it is responsible for having the coordination and synchronization between the other tasks and basically. Next one is the Apache Chukwa. What is this Apache Chukwa means? Uh, Chukwa it is an uh, open source uh, uh, platform so where we can manage all the large distributed files here and uh, we can manage the large scale log collection and analysis built on the top of the Hadoop system and uh, Chukwa aims to provide a flexible and powerful platform for the distributed data collection and uh, where this is completely responsible to use the new storage uh, technologies like uh, HDFS, HBAs and all and to maintain this flexibility, Chukwa it is a structure like a pipeline of collection and processing the stages with clean and narrow interfaces between the stages here. So that means Chukwa is basically responsible for analyzing the dynamic data sets also. And this is responsible for displaying, analyzing and monitoring all the data sets. So that is the role of the Apache Chukwa in the HDFS. And Apache Flume, whatever this Apache Flume means, Flume, uh, this is an uh, open source tool for collecting, aggregating and moving the huge amounts of uh, streaming data here. So, Flume is basically responsible for uh, storing the, uh, for retrieving the streaming data and then analyzing whatever the live data is there that uh, analysis of the live data will be done by the Apache Flume uh, from the external web servers to the central stores, say it like uh, HDFS or HBS, whatever it may be. And the main purpose of designing the Apache Flume is to move the streaming data generated by the various applications into the Hadoop distributed file systems. And we are having the millions of services that are running on the multiple servers here where they, where they produce the lot many log files are there. All these log files, that means if you take the social media content, you take the Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn services or your your YouTube, whatever it may be, where it will generate for each and every event and application and action, it will generate lot of log files from all the production servers. So all these log files has to be analyzed in a brief manner uh, so that uh, we can uh, use this Apache Flume in uh, analyzing all these things. So that's uh, that's all for uh, today's guys. That is the complete explanation about the Apache Hadoop ecosystem. So thank you for watching. Hope you like this video guys.